give an introduction. Mike, uh, current, he has retired from the CIA. He is currently working on digital imaging of documents. And uh, as an example, he is soon to go to St. Catherine's Monastery in the Sinai Desert of Egypt to uh, take ancient manuscripts that are being digitized and made available. So it's an exciting retirement job for Mike. So welcome to Mike, who will introduce our alumnus of the year. Good morning. Salam alaikum. It's uh, good to be here to, to um, honor <laughs> my friend from the 70s. And uh, but before we do so, uh, in keeping the spirit of the music, I uh, wanted to make a, uh, a few announcements that uh, probably Canon Hay, our headmaster at the time, would like to make. Uh, I know many of you are opposed to the uh, war overseas, but I ask you to keep your protests uh, off campus. Uh, the war in Vietnam is, is drawing to a close. Uh, and, uh, Dean Campbell, uh, afterwards, we'll be uh, checking men's hair length. Remember, it's not supposed to be below the coat collar. Uh, and uh, our Dean of Women, Ms. Williams, will be checking skirt lengths uh, because you must uh, keep modest dress and uh, make sure your hair length is, uh, is not too long. Uh, but seriously, <laughs> that by the way is normal and me that way. Uh, seriously, uh, we honor our distinguished alumni, alumnus, uh, for uh, their role in the community, for their role at Trinity. And it's usually done in war. Uh, but in this case, it's an end. It's the role that Maryland has played within the Trinity community, within the community here in Central Florida, and within the community of you as students, you as future alum, and we as alumni. So I wanted to give you a little more background on Maryland's many years, decades, at Trinity. <laughs> Starting as a student, as a sophomore. The pictures are here too. <laughs> she started as a sophomore here uh, at Trinity. Uh, her graduating class uh, was, a, was a, a small one, uh, especially uh, relative to today. Uh, she was uh, a writer and uh, editor-in-chief of what was then the Trumpeter, the school newspaper. She was a very prolific writer, as evident from these uh, notes in uh, Dan uh, McIntosh's uh, yearbook here. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, uh, she was also in the drama club uh, and uh, quite an actress, uh, which continues to this day. Here she is with a member of our class, uh, Kurt Van Zyl, who unfortunately was a smoker at Trinity and uh, died of cancer. Uh, but she, she eventually uh, uh, reached her senior year, one of, what was it, 74 students in the graduating class. Uh, and uh, there were some classmates there, uh, Liz, uh, Liz Lowndes uh, McIntosh, who's our, uh, our director of alumni, uh, and her husband, and uh, Dan, uh, and then, uh, what's her older brother? Younger, younger. younger brother, uh, Bob, my Bob, there. There are some other faces uh, at Trinity. <laughs> So, 
But she, Marilyn, has always played a core role in our community. She has always uh, kept, served as the glue to keep so many of us together uh, and demonstrated the, the mission and the principles of Trinity uh, with the Trinity community, with education, with her church, and with her family. And that's really what we're, we're honoring Marilyn for, is how much she, she exemplifies the Trinity spirit in all parts of her life, and as such, has served as such a distinguished alumni. Uh, of course, with her family, uh, also, she was a Trinity parent, uh, two students, Amelia and Thomas, uh, who uh, graduated and are now, uh, they've entered the, the working world themselves, uh, and uh, raising two great kids uh, in the same, same spirit as you. <laughs> Never loses her sense of fun. But throughout this, we really, we like to think we don't change. Uh, the years have gone by, uh, but you still retain that Trinity spirit. Uh, yeah, there's some physical changes, but it's what we, we first gained here at Trinity that we carried forward. And of course, Marilyn has not changed, as you can see, uh, over the years. Uh, but we are, are very pleased uh, and very honored, uh, and it was, it's, it's very special for me uh, to introduce my friend um, and to, to come back to Trinity to uh, recognize Marilyn Wyckoff Williams for all she's done for Trinity, uh, starting as a student, uh, as a uh, teacher here, uh, as an alumnus, uh, as uh, just a core part of the Trinity community. So thank you, Marilyn, and uh, please speak to you. Now girls can play every sport 
and on championship teams performing in the best facilities in Central Florida. When I was a junior and a senior, I was editor of the Trinity newspaper, The Trumpeter, which consisted of a mimeograph machine, was turned by hand, and it sat in the back of the English classroom. Now the Cayo receives awards for excellence in every category and has its own offices. <laughs> As a member of the Trinity Players, we built our own stage, each performance as well as sets, and we put on and set up in the science building with folding chairs for the audience. Since this auditorium was built in 1997, the curtain has opened on spectacular sets with wonderful student performances. My first job after college was as a seventh and eighth grade English teacher at Trinity. <coughs> And because this building was not even here, I looked out over the lawn to the lake from my classroom in the Holloway building. What a beautiful view. And we often went outside. I took the students outside to have class. And as there was no sixth grade and no middle school building, we kind of had our own little corner. And we were the youngest students in the school. Some of your parents were those seventh and eighth graders that I taught. And it has been one of the most special joys of my career to be able to teach the children of my former students. I've also taught the children of my colleagues and appreciated the trust that they put in me. And teachers who taught me in turn taught my children. Mrs. Denicole, Mr. Bluge, and Mr. Fulmer. My middle school students made me laugh every day and learn something every day. Through their civics presentations, I know about so many things in the world that I would never have otherwise known. I was able to share a love of poetry and literature with children who wrote their own original works and shared them with me. I always said I had the best of both worlds because I taught two subjects that I was passionate about. I have taught amazing students who have become extraordinary adults and they contribute to their communities every day in meaningful ways. I have been a better teacher because I was a parent. And I've been a better parent because I have been a teacher. Although my own children, Amelia and Thomas, would tell you that there were times it was very difficult to have a parent at the school with them <coughs> all day, every day, teaching their friends, knowing everything that went on, having to get here so early, waiting for after school meetings, but I viewed it as the most wonderful gift. You both always made me proud of your accomplishments and your relationships here, in and out of school, and how special it was for my husband and me, both Trinity grads, to give our children their diplomas on this stage. And now that I am a business owner, what I miss most in my day are the experiences that teaching at this school gave me. Listening to the most incredible jazz music in the morning before school began. Lunchtime faculty art lessons from gifted artists. Going to the library to learn about the newest and best young adult literature and then getting to read it. Fascinating speakers, cultural programs, inspiring chapels with choir and orchestra, entertaining plays, and what could be more exciting than watching athletes who you know playing for a state championship. It just doesn't get any better than that. Please take advantage of these treasures that are offered to you every day at the school. Being a part of this Trinity family has also formed who I am as wife, mother, daughter, sister, and friend. I met my husband, Len, here, and the headmaster, Kenneth, and married us, and he baptized our children. 
My brother and his wife and my three brothers-in-law are all Trinity grads. So many of my closest friends have a Trinity connection with me. And I thank you for being here with me today. I hope that each of you is fortunate enough in your life to work with people who are creative and caring, loyal and loving, talented and terrific, as my friends and this Trinity faculty are. You will be truly blessed if you have that. And I hope your lives are touched and inspired by people like Carol Sheever, Karen Shellhouse, Jonathan May, and Carol Denicol, who left an everlasting mark on the school and on me. In the Trinity alma mater, Sarah Harris Obermeyer, who was one of my first seventh graders, uh, wrote one man's dream to see. I could never get through the whole alma mater without crying at that line. But the one man's dream to see, that man was Canon A. Reese Hay, who was the founder and first headmaster of Trinity. His portrait hangs in the front office, and the bell tower is named for him. He also called for the first headmaster's day, which I will miss being the announcer of. <laughs> and I have a feeling it's coming up soon. <laughs> I saw the uh, t-shirts going out to the advisories. Mr. Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> Canon Hay told me when he first hired me as a teacher that this is where I was meant to be. And as usual, he was so right. It has been a privilege to watch and be a part of that dream coming true at this school. I miss you all very much. I miss this place. Please come visit me at my store, Owen Allen, in Winter Park Village. <laughs> That's a plug. Um, and some of you do, and, and your parents come, and I love seeing you. I thank you very much for this award. I am truly honored, and I'm deeply touched. And I wouldn't keep you any longer, um, because it's Friday, and it's uh, casual day, and it's, uh, time for you to go back to class and, and learn everything that you can in this place. Thank you all. Thank you. 